What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda out here with this 2019 Toyota Corolla, and I want to show you what I love about it and what I hate about it. All right, so for those of you who aren't going to stick around and watch the whole video, I'll tell you what, I really actually like this car a lot and for some surprising reasons. And there's a lot of details that I like and a few that I don't and that I really wish they would change on future models. But I want to show you this car. Let's take a look. First of all, we might as well start with the outside. And I actually like these looks. Now, uh, you can tell that I'm in this parking lot. And if you watch my video recently on the Chevy Cruze that I rented, this is a rental, by the way. Uh, you know, I wanted to uh, get this because I wanted to really compare it to my experience renting the Chevy Cruze in the same environment in the same neighborhood here and I really like this a lot better so that's the spoiler alert uh, it's actually a pretty nice little car now one of the things that I didn't like about the Chevy Cruze was the exterior styling I actually thought it was uh, I didn't think it was an upgrade from the previous style Chevy Cruze which I actually owned when they first came out with that car I kind of like the blocky brawniness of that car and I didn't like how pinched and sharp and trying to be uh, as sleek as it is in its new form now I would say this Corolla is a little bit similar in that it's kind of got this as you can see here this pointy front front end but what I think is more successful on it and where they're embracing the size of the car a little bit better is this big open mouth grill here this is kind of a little Aston Martin ish to me a little Audi or Lexus like and what it does is it kind of uh, shrinks that front end kind of flattens it out to make it a little brawnier as opposed to pointy it does have kind of similar treatment around the headlight and the grill but I think that grill are the, the kind of this upper grill but this lower grill here kind of helps uh, shrink up that size and it kind of embraces its small cars size. I also like some of these curved lines. I think Toyota does a pretty good job of following those lines and I think overall it's okay. It, you know nothing about this car to me screams like super attractive. Like this tail light treatment here is very run-of-the-mill. Very 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 basic. Um, the kick up line here on the back of the rear door is a little funny. I guess it's to thicken up this rear end kind of make it look a little bigger. Uh, it gives it a little bit of a Volkswagen Jetta look. It's okay you know but nothing about it says like wow this is a car that I'm really lusting after. Now, one of the things that I really don't like about it um, are the fact that it comes with hubcaps on this car. And it's a little funny because there are um, some split personality traits on this car. Some really low-end things like these hubcaps on steel wheels versus uh, some of the amenities inside, which are pretty nice. I guess some of the features that they're just including. Now, I will say for hubcaps, these look pretty good. They kind of have a kind of a deep... Um, you know, three-dimensional shape to them, so they almost look like alloy wheels. But to me, just visually, these wheels are too small and they should be a little bit bigger, give the car a little bit more sporty look. Now, let's go back to the back end here and I wanna show you a couple things. First of all, on the rental, they give you both keys. I always hate when they do that in case I were to lose a key uh, and call them, I'd be like, hey, do you have the other spare key? And they'd be like, nope, <laughs> you have it. But what I actually kinda of do like here is that it's a little bit of an old school key and it's very small and light. It's no bigger than like any other key, but the remote controls are on the key itself and that's actually kind of cool because when you get the flip out switchblade key it tends to be pretty big so this is kind of pretty efficient lock unlock but what I really like here is this whole trunk button and let me just show you when I hold this down I love that the trunk pops open so it's kind of spring loaded under here on these hinges and that means that if I'm walking up to it and I hit the trunk button that means usually I want to get access to my trunk and I love the fact that it opens up all the way without having like an electrically assisted thing or something that can break it's just nice I have a lot of cars that just you hold down the trunk button and it just like goes pop and you still have to lift it up so this is really cool uh, I love the fact that they do it it's a small thing but uh, that has really impressed me because as you can see my backpack in there I'm using the trunk now let's come around here to the driver's side this is where things start uh, falling into the love hate category but overall pretty nice now I am gonna jump in here into the car and the first thing I want to show you are these seats these cloth seats I actually like how they kind of have some Oh, different shapes sewn into it. It kind of highlights these bolsters. The color combination isn't great. I just don't like uh, the material particularly. It's not bad. It's actually pretty rigid and thick for cloth material. This part here, because of its shine or something, I'm not sure if it's the sheen or this wave pattern in it, but it just looks a little cheap to me. A again, I think the color is not helping it either. There's gray around the interior of this car. I do like the fact that it's two-tone, but I don't really like gray. I've said that about GMs. It just reminds me of crappy Fisher Price plastic and so uh, that's uh, one of the things that always kind of bugs me is is just a, like a light gray in cars it just looks uh, pretty cheap now it's it's ubiquitous in cars it's all over the place so I'm not going to 
I'll beat them on the, too much for that. And hopefully they have some other color combinations if you want to get this trim level car. But if they don't and it's just gray, eesh, that's kind of that's kind of gross. But it's a preference thing. Now, first of all, I'm um, going to take the key here and fire this thing up because I want to give you a little bit of a tour of the interior of this car because this is where things start to really shine. I think it's probably easiest if I go over the things that I hate first and then surprise you with the stuff that I was surprised to the upside on. First of all, they do this in the Camry too. And a lot of the other Toyotas right now, they put this faux stitch in there. It's molded into the material all along the, the front here. And they do it here on the steering wheel um, center as well. And these are all just molded in plastic. This is something I remember on my buddy's 87 Chevy Cavalier, although this is taken to a new level. I actually really like this plastic material. I think it looks good, feels pretty good. It's obviously a little bit uh, soft. In fact, at some point this rental, it got bumped here and there's a little cut here on the dash, which kind of will annoy you because it's right in the center um, of the dash there. But it's okay. I get that this is kind of a like a oh, higher end premium thing it's 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 just perceived value but what i wish is if they had molded in a track here and then actually sewn in like some polyester thread that was maybe slightly different colored if you remember my gmc terrain video i actually liked they had like some vinyl and then they used a red stitch on there and then they faked it on the back doors but at least in the front there was an actual stitch on it Personally, I would prefer you to either not to do this at all, just because this plastic isn't bad. This material up here looks good, feels good. You don't really need that. And because it is there and it's fake, it kind of annoys me. So I wish they wouldn't do that. On here, it's actually not as bad. I think maybe just because there's less and it looks like the stitch molding is a little larger. This material here looks pretty good, uh, kind of like that dashboard. I just wish we could either do a real stitch, which wouldn't necessarily hold anything together, it would just be for aesthetics, or don't fake the stitch. Okay, now that being said, I wanna talk a little bit more about materials. You have a very similar material here on the door panel, which looks good, and on this handle, which looks and feels good. Um, so I actually really like that because uh, to me, it's the materials up, kind of where your eye is, what you're touching a lot, look and feel pretty good. I think that door panel looks pretty good. Now the material I really wanna call out here is the steering wheel. You can see it is a single piece, it's all plastic. We have a little bit of molded grip here. Um, and then what you can see down here is the flashing, the seam where they you know, sandwich the two parts of the mold together. But I will say, normally I would get in the car and be like, please leather wrap the steering wheel, it just feels better, they don't feel cheap and chunky. This is the first car I've ever gotten into and I grabbed a plastic steering wheel that I did not realize was plastic first. Now once, now that I know, it, I can definitely tell, but there's nothing about it that really irks me every time I grab it and say, oh, there's no plastic, it doesn't feel good. When I got in that Chevy Cruze and touched that wheel, it felt like plastic. There's a couple things happening. This is, seems to be softer and and the ridges here, um, the texture tends to be deeper. And that kind of feels a lot more like a leather or some sort of natural material as opposed to this plastic. They just seem to do a good job of it. The other thing is that because it's slightly squishy, you know, on the top end, it doesn't feel like a really, really hard, uh, inflexible plastic to me. So again, as I when I first picked up this car, I was driving around, it didn't even dawn on me that it's plastic. The other thing they've done, and I showed you the flashing here, is that I can't feel it. I'm not sure if it's just the quality of the mold or if they kind of lap it or something at the end. I can't feel a seam up here at all. You can see where it is though, but especially in the, some of those GMs, you can feel that seam. There's a little bit of a ledge. It doesn't hurt or it's not super uncomfortable, but you can feel it and so that you can tell, hey, this is a two-piece molded plastic steering wheel. But this car is the first one that's really impressed me with the plastic steering wheel wheel um, as it is. So good on Toyota for doing that. I get that this is probably a lot cheaper. It's a lot easier to produce, but uh, for some reason they, they, they that happened. And maybe it's a little thicker than some of the other ones too. Okay, now let me go to the door here where I'm also impressed. You can see here we've got a little bit mix of materials. You know, this is the hardest plastic. This is a little softer. It's still hard. Not as soft as this or as this. But what I think this plastic, this plastic, and this plastic look um, pretty rich and premium. You can hear that they're not a super premium material, but then they've mixed some together. So we have like this piano black 
uh, trim piece right here and this like silver trim obviously there's piano black trim and silver trim up here as well and silver down here so it's kind of a uh, a material that you see a lot but they did a really nice job of it it's not overdone and here is where I'm calling out differences between Toyota and things like Chevy what you can see here let me get rid of this vent from blowing on the phone I might uh, screw up the audio is where the plastic pieces meet they've just cut them flush and they are allowing two flat pieces to come together even all the way down here on this seam right there now you might be saying okay Pete what's the big deal the, the big deal about this is I've seen this on Mercedes too where like the wood trim comes up and they just cut it so that it fits flush to the piece that it's meeting. The, the difference is with the American automakers for whatever reason never like having edges that look sharp or, or, or sit flush without rounded edges. I feel like if this were a GM they would bevel this edge really really heavily almost you know curve it down because they just don't like really flush exacting fits like that. I don't know why they do that. It's a really, it's really annoying. Like this edge here, even though it's gonna cut straight down, this edge would be rolled in, like sanded down um, to, to the point where it meets this, right? I just don't know why they do that, but I love the fact that they're doing it. Um, I know that they're kind of the, oh, early 2000s, mid 2000s Mercedes SL on the door panel too has the handle with like a wood trim piece coming up to it and it just, it's just cut flush like that and fits great. I guess you have to trust that the pieces are gonna fit perfectly. Maybe you round them so that you get a little bit of forgiveness in there or something like that, I don't know. The other thing that I really actually like are these vents. So you can see here, this vent, it's got a kind of nice little chrome ring on the tip here where I'm adjusting it. It's like a torpedo style vent. Kind of reminds me of like Ferraris or Italian cars. It looks good. It's got a sporty little look to it. Uh, it's only these two side vents. The middle vents are, are flat. But the other thing is that it, um, when you turn this to close it, they kind of have like these turbine blades that kind of flip out and that's how it closes. So it's pretty nice. And then when I open it up, I can rotate it anywhere. It's super easy and quick to, to use. I, I dig that. It's got a little silver around it. It looks pretty premium. Nothing about it feels overly great. It's it's pretty floppy, but uh, I think it looks good. And it's just, it's kind of clever. It doesn't look too old school to me, right? So that's pretty cool. Now, the head unit here is pretty flat. This reminds me of the Toyota CHR. I just reviewed that. I loved that small SUV. So this car shares a, a number of things with it, but it's in a car format. And so there's some things I don't like, but what we have here is the head unit down here that looks pretty good. It's all piano black and you have uh, a touch screen in here and this works pretty well. I can connect my iPhone to it, Bluetooth, that's all well and good. Um, I don't know that the piano black to me is going to resist fingerprints very well. It looks pretty trendy. I don't know how well it'll age, but you can see here even the, the, the radio buttons are smooth piano black, so they don't feel super grippy, but they, I've never had any problems with them working. The one non-Toyota thing here, as you can see this hazard light button is off-centered. And I thought, oh, well maybe it got hit and I just kind of need to release it to knock it in place, but I've been playing around with it and it is off-center. So I'm not sure why, but it is. I'm not gonna beat them up too much for an off-center button. And then the controls down here, I love the fact that it comes with auto air controls, you know, so that you can set the temperature. If I put this thing in reverse, what we have are distance lines, no trajectory though. Unfortunately, if it's in the setting somewhere, I have not been able to find it, but I, I really like that it's pretty quick. In fact, when I move this back out of park, man, it is, or back into park, it is uh, quick to disappear. Now, the other thing is, I have not really played with equalizer settings on here. And if you look up here, I think we have like tweeters um, up here and this, you know, some speakers down there. And, you know, when you put like speaker moldings like this that are very visible up top, I usually am a little skeptical that it's trying to look more high end than it is. But I will tell you that I'm going to turn the radio up here just for a hot second. Oh, uh, the there's no music on that station. I'll tell you what, I cranked that up and the audio in here sounds pretty darn good. And it doesn't distort on the high end like a lot of speakers, you know, and sound systems will when you just crank them. So I actually thought it was a little bit of a gimmick, but they must have some decent hardware in here, some decent audio speakers in here because it sounds pretty good, especially when I wasn't expecting much from a car on this price point. So that's pretty good. Now, these vents are a little out of place, but I, I actually like this. I think it's got a modern, clean look. The one thing that I think is a little tired here is this 
secondary uh, clock that is very much old school. Like when I was growing up, we had like a 1990 Honda Accord that had like a very similar clock. And that to me, uh, that kind of violates a lot of kind of the smooth modernness to everything. And we'll get to more of the modern features here in a second. The other thing that I was surprised about and I've actually come to love is I jumped in this car originally when I rented it and I was like, oh my gosh, it's a stick shift, right? This is a really thin looking shifter. It's kind of almost like a small ball shifter. And I was like, ah, oh, that's a manual, whatever. It's not, it's an automatic. But the way they've done this is that in an inexpensive car, this actually looks pretty good. A lot of times you'll just have a plastic, you know, or a metal post here that goes up and down on an exposed track. But the fake leather boot here and kind of this uh, treatment down here, the piano black, it's surrounded by the silver. It looks pretty good. In fact, when I put it in reverse, like I said, it's just a regular automatic, but it's a little gated. You can see the track that it falls here. So um, unlike those electronic shifters, you're going to know exactly what your gear you're in, like reverse. And then if I want neutral, it's down here and drive. Like I have to go back over here to get to reverse and then up here to get back into park. I'm exaggerating those movements. It's, everything's pretty quick, but it's, it reminds me a little bit of the Jaguar J gates down here. And so that's kind of funny. Now I do actually like this cubby. I've been putting my phone down there. As you can see, we have a USB and a power port right there. I wish it were a little wider. And one of the things that I thought was kind of a miss on this is that you could almost disguise like a phone holder in here, like have a little lip here so that I could set the phone here and then like maybe a pull out or retractable clip on the top so that I could put my phone right here, have it between these vents, something like that. I wish more cars would integrate a phone holder of some level in there. Uh, you know, it, this one doesn't, but it's, it's on my wish list because I think everyone has phone holders or phones and they need a phone holder. So this worked all right. And in fact, I could kind of put my phone here like sideways to use the screen on GPS. Now, let me get to the things that I'm really surprised about. First, the bad, because there's a couple of really good ones. This car is not equipped with blind spot monitoring. In that Toyota CHR review, it did have it, and I was thrilled with it because the blind spot was terrible. The rear, you can't see out that rear window, but I will say that in this car, you have really good visibility all the way around. So uh, you can get away with not having blind spot warning system in here. You can just see really, really wide open greenhouse. And that's okay because I was shocked to see that you can see the little icon right up here. This car has lane departure warning that you activate with this button right down here. And so it will nudge you, beep at you when you kind of drift over those white lines, which was pretty amazing. I didn't know that. And it's kind of, it'll kind of nudge the steering wheel, which is, which is crazy in a car of this price point. The other thing that I was surprised on is back off radar for cruise control. So I can turn on cruise control and radar ready. And so it'll give you a standoff range of the car you're following and, you know, slow the car down. Pretty awesome, especially in an entry level car like this. I was really honestly surprised to see that. And obviously you can see what the gauges look like here, but those two features in a car at this price point, um, like I said, this is not the high end, no leather seats or anything like that. Uh, really, really impressed with. So just overall, I actually really like this car. You know, when I look at this versus the cruise, what I like is the upright appearance here. And I actually like the fact that they have gone a two tone material with like this uh, hard vinyl. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a soft material. I don't know if you can see my finger kind of pressing in there, but it's stiff, but what there are are some really soft, you know, minute contours in it. And it looks pretty good. Kind of breaks up that dash and it, things are vertical. They're kind of building them for the ergonomics of, of the driver. And what I really felt in that cruise is that they're trying to still push that waterfall thing on us, which was so 90s, so 2000s, and GM is just kind of behind the game. And the biggest thing was cloth on the dashboard and on the doors. I don't understand why Chevy ever did that in the first place. If it was a really tight, like technical knit, like a technical cloth, like the Maseratis, maybe I could see it, but it's just like the seat cloth on those things. So it's, it's kind of frustrating, but I actually like this. It kind of breaks it up and gives it a nice little look. Again, I'd probably, prefer it if you could get them in some different colors than gray, but uh, you know, it is what it is. So overall, I really actually like this car. Uh, you know, it's not an expensive car. And even at the price point, I think all the stuff you get really makes it uh, pretty nice. And I will say I've had it for a few days and it's a nice place to be. 
in terms of how it drives, it drives exactly like you expect, no better or worse, but there are no surprises to the downside. It's not like overly darty. You don't feel like you're moving to the ruts in the road. It uh, doesn't over or under steer. Uh, it has a little bit of nice pep, you know, but it's not fast by any means. The thing about that cruise is that it surprised me to the downside. It was just, uh, you were always having to do these little inputs that I don't feel like you're doing on this car. You know, you can really just kind of drive it and it's uh, about the experience that you expect, which is absolutely fine. I'm not looking to be blown away by it. I'm just looking to not have to do more or less than any other driver would expect in any other car. So pretty cool. Obviously maintenance required in this rental car. So hopefully they get that done when you get back. But um, pretty cool. I really like it. If you want to pick up the Toyota accessories for this car, I'll put a link to it in the description. Peter Von Panda, out.